Where to then? Very, very few people can actually do this. We well, go forward into Kings Road, forward into Sloan Square, lead by Cliveton Place, forward into Eaton Square. This is John, for 30 years, a London black cab driver. Left into Buckingham Palace Road, forward into Buckingham Gate. When the examiner handed me my badge, he said to me, congratulations, well done. This is the equivalent of doing a degree in law. And the academics, they're amazed. They're like chess grandmasters. They're absolute experts at something that's unbelievable, <laughs> piecing together 26,000 streets to make a move. This is Hugo Spears, Professor of Cognitive Neuroscience at the University College London. And they can do it in the drop of a hat. They have to. You can't sit on Euston Road thinking for 10 minutes which way to go. And this is Ordnance Survey's Chief Scientist, Jeremy Morley. The research that we've been sponsoring has been to look at this process of navigation in taxi drivers and particularly what's going on inside their heads in a very literal sense of what's going on inside their brains. You're listening to the sound of our volunteer taxi driver, John. He's in an MRI scanner and he's being tested on his knowledge of London roads. So this measures changes in the blood oxygen levels. So if a bit of your brain needs to do something, like I sort of think back to the past and think, how do I, how do I get to the, the shops? I haven't been there in a while. How do I do that? It will need more oxygen to go to the bits of the brain to help me remember where the shops are. You can use MRI, much like a three-dimensional camera, to measure how much oxygen is going into different bits of the brain. All right, well done. Perfect. Would you like to continue with a technical scan? Yeah. What's exciting about taxi drivers, you could, you could do this test with anyone, but taxi drivers are amazing because they all tested on an exam. So we know they know what they know. Whenever we tested them, they are amazing at this. If you have a group of people that can really solve quite difficult problems that we can, we can map out in detail, which the general population just don't. And we've been able to see already some really exciting patterns of brain activity that help us advance our, our models, our understanding of how the brain processes memory and plans. But in the course of what we've been doing, you know, thanks to Ordnance Survey, we've been able to measure lots of their brains to see the size and utter detail. And we've also looked to see how they're using it. In fact, there's been no study that's really clued in and like investigated how they use their brain when they really process a set of roots. All right, amazing job. How are you feeling? Good. And one bit of the brain is critical. It's called the hippocampus, which in taxi drivers is much more full and active and a treasure trove for scientific research. More on the mapping applications in a moment. First, though, a critical medical aspect. So the cells in this bit of the brain build something like a map inside our head that we use to navigate, to find our way around, but also to remember things. This particular brain region degenerates and gets smaller in Alzheimer's disease. We need to understand scientifically, I think, for, for thinking about dementia. Because that, that navigation ability loss is one of the key things that goes wrong in the earliest stages of Alzheimer's dementia. Uh, before the really severe memory loss, where people can't remember uh, who people are or what they're doing, before that begins to, to occur, it appears that in many cases of, of Alzheimer's dementia, um, that uh, they become slightly disoriented. And so spotting that earlier, monitoring it, really seems to be a key part of that disease. So we have a tool, but how do the taxi drivers do? They're absolute experts at navigating. And some of them are, are you know, in their 70s and still operating. But they, they seem to hold something very interesting in terms of that, how they might form in a test and how that might relate to their brain structure as well. How's your day going? And for mapping experts... Well, the way we remember routes could change the way maps of the future are created. The really exciting bit is turning this wonderful research that happens at British universities into something practical and usable. The aspects that are to do with how taxi drivers appear to be kind of sectioning up the city and at what points are they making the crucial decisions you know, that we see in some of the data, for example, that a taxi driver can recite very quickly a set of routes across one zone and then there's a pause where they, they think about the next bit and then they're on to the, the next section. You know, that is giving us information directly and that's what's been followed up in the MRI scans to actually see that in action deep in the brain and you know, this relates what's going on in, if you like, the wetware of our brain to actually what might be data and services of the future. With a million maps printed every year, Ordnance Survey isn't stopping anytime soon. But Jeremy is tasked with looking into a whole new future. 
the paper map that you get has the symbols and the lines already drawn on it and that's, that's what you get. There was no other data than what was on the printing plates that made paper map. The opportunity these days is to store data in databases in ways that we can derive different information, present it differently, you know, whether it's in exciting new game engines or whether it's through machine-to-machine -machine access through APIs and so on. So we're not deciding the purpose for, before we publish. It's a great new horizon. And finally, from Professor Hugo Spears. Using the kind of mapping data that wouldn't survey have will be an exciting avenue there, piecing together trails of like where the taxi drivers mentally think their way through the maps and where do they physically go as they, as they drive the streets of London will be an exciting avenue. And Jeremy Morley. For us, we are interested in British academia in, in two different directions, both on the core technology that drives our business, the factory as it were, and in the application area so we can understand better the future use of our data and the requirements that that kind of puts back on us. British academia is world class and you know, rivals the rest of the world. There you go. See a better place with Ordnance Survey.